Hey guys, welcome back to World of Warships. Today we're taking a look at the shill. With this ship being available for direct purchase this update, uh, let's get an updated video out on it. If you haven't seen it before, this is a bit of an up-tiered graph spee at tier 8. You get those 283mm guns, but fortunately they've been buffed. They're much, much better than the graph spee guns, which is nice to see. You get much higher pen, so you have... 334 millimeters of pen at 15 kilometers versus graph speeds 231. So pretty massive increase there. You also have cruiser dispersion and that's key here. Your dispersion is very, very nice on this ship relative to graph speed, which is going to have battle cruiser dispersion. Or if you've played Charnhorst, well, then you have these guns with battleship dispersion, <laughs> which is not amazing. Also here, we do have a lot of utility. Not only do we have a heal and a hydro, but we also get the spotter plane and a reload booster. This is gonna give you 50% reduced reload for 20 seconds. Also, given the larger caliber of these guns, we also have some nice overmatch characteristics here, getting over 19 millimeters. So a lot of light cruisers and lower tier cruisers, you're just gonna overmatch straight through. You're seeing some very, very nice damage that here. Graph Speed, though, does have short fuses, where the shill only has standard AP fuses. That means on very lightly armored cruisers that are very broadside, you might get yourself some overpens where you'd right like to see citadels. That shouldn't happen too often, though. It's not like your battleship caliber, but the improved shell velocity or the flight characteristics here means you might get a few more overpens than you'd like to see. But this ship is very interesting in that it shows us what a tier 8 sort of looks like compared to Brennus, which came out this update as well. Brennus being an upcalibered Henry 305s, and you lose out on the reload booster and a hydro or defensive fire on that ship relative to Henry. But Shill retains a reload booster and a hydro. It's very nice to have those things. I don't think Shill is terribly amazing anyway, but it still has a booster and a Hydra. I just think that's a very interesting comparison that I didn't really think of until I realized this ship was available for purchase this update. Kind of odd that Brennus didn't manage to keep those things. Of course, Brennus does have a better base reload and it's way higher in the tiers. It's much more maneuverable, all that stuff, but Kind of interesting here that this ship was able to retain larger caliber guns, cruiser dispersion, and still have that reload booster and a hydro, which is very useful as there's a lot of submarines in the game and you're gonna want that hydro for subs as we'll see in a little bit. I had a tough time with Brennus thanks to subs every once in a while just because of lacking a hydro. Hobart pushing in here and again, overmatch really helping us out here. And I suppose I already said it, I don't necessarily recommend Shill. Um, certainly not for the price that they're asking for this ship. 11,300 doubloons is quite a lot. And considering Black Friday is coming up, I don't think you should really be using your doubloons on Shill here. Just wait a month and you've got discounts on much stronger, better ships around this same tier. We'll see what the full roster is this Black Friday. I've heard some rumors that some of the rare ships might not be available, but... Uh, I haven't confirmed that at all, just just a small uh, thing I've heard. Hopefully they still are, as Massachusetts, uh, Alaska, John Bart, very interesting ships to get. And you get them at a discount on Black Friday, if nothing else. It's really, really nice to get that for, I think, 8,000, maybe at most 9,000 doubloons for a Tier 8 premium here, where it's 11,300. So I would suggest waiting a month. Here we're going to use our ASWs and not really hit anything, unfortunately. <laughs> but we have our Hydro and able to push up because these battleships have gone behind this island. We're trying to play with our teammates here. Shield doesn't have the best armor, but a 30 mil deck is pretty nice. And uh, we have solid belt armor as well. Not enough to protect our Citadel entirely, but good enough. And this allows you to play somewhat aggressively. I wouldn't be trying to brawl battleships in this ship, not at all. Your secondaries don't have improved accuracy, even though they have okay range. So I wouldn't really recommend building that at all. And I think we finally get him here. Hydro managing to spot him at two kilometers, guaranteed. Very, very nice to have a Hydro on your ship, guys. <laughs> very, very nice. Um, now we have a decision to make. Do we go push these battleships or do we go try and help and deal with the enemy team in the north? 
The ship is quite slow, so it's more likely we should deal with these battleships here. Although I don't want to be leading the charge, as, again, that armor. There's a bit of Icebreaker. Uh, we'll look at the armor towards the end with the build, of course, but there's a bit of Icebreaker. It's 30 millimeters, so it's effective at these tiers, but anytime you get slightly larger caliber guns, right, uh, 430s and above, you're going to get overmatched through your bow anyway. But our armor holds reasonably well against the Normandy and uh, hopefully against the Nagato here later on. I make a mistake and pop my reload booster and really don't get much value out of it. I do want to be using these reload boosters more. Um, if you've ever seen a video of mine dealing with a ship with a reload booster, you'll know that I tend to save them too much and I really am trying to force myself anytime I'm playing a ship with a reload booster to just use it. And here was a bad example of that. This is where I shouldn't have, but it's very easy to not get through all of your reload boosters by the end of the game. And that's just going to be free damage you're leaving on the table. And that's really going to help the damage output of the shill since your DPM is so bad. You really need to be focused on finding those broadsides and punishing them with mostly the reload booster here to help you out, but as well as that cruiser dispersion. Something that's a little unfortunate about this ship as well is going to be your firing angles. You only have a 35 degree firing angle, I think? 34. Uh, 34 forwards and backwards. So you're not angled quite enough to deal with battleship shells to bounce them on your belt armor. They still can get through. And you're going to see me be a little bit greedy here in a little bit. Nagato won't have the best dispersion and I get greedy for my rear turrets. And we're going to take some damage. Even though there's a bit of turtle back here, spaced armor... At these ranges, certainly it's not enough to deal with battleship shells. They're going to go right through you and probably citadel you if you're firing all of your guns. For cruiser AP, though, you should be okay, I think. Um, I haven't tested it too much as I don't play this ship all that often, but it should be okay. The superstructure looks a little weird. I don't think it's that much superstructure, although I haven't been HE farmed in this ship by a light cruiser, so I'm not sure about that. But I think it should be relatively tanky. You're, you're really good against cruisers, I guess, is what I'm trying to say. Torpedo-wise, you do have 8-kilometer torpedoes, which is really, really nice to have. A little bit longer than some of the standard cruisers uh, in the German line get. They're usually around uh, 6 kilometers, right? So it's a little bit extra, but not really going to help you out that much. Um, if you're within 8 kilometers, you're already in brawling range. You might lose a lot of HP rather quickly. Popping a reload booster here now as this Nagato is stuck broadside. And you're going to see how he doesn't have the best dispersion on us here. So I think, oh, I don't have to be too careful. And yet uh, we're still going to take some pretty massive damage here. That is definitely a Citadel. However, we Citadel him back. So nice to see the AP here doing some work. The better shell velocity or I guess flight characteristics. I think the initial velocity is the same as Graf Speed. But flight drag, crop, whatever these hidden values are, mean the shells get to the target at range much faster. It's really nice on this ship, allowing you to have an easier time aiming at these longer ranges. You also get that spotter plane, so if you need more range, especially in those tier 10 up tiers, you might need that. But with the playstyle of the ship, I don't think you necessarily want to be using your spotter planes all that much. You want to use the concealment to get to mid ranges and then go after cruisers especially. But if you're forced to play those longer ranges in tier 10, maybe you're wanting to spam some HG. It's fine, I guess. I mean, 71 mil pen is really nice, so you should be getting a lot of full pens. 20% fire chance is fine as well. Keep in mind, you don't have the best reload or shell volume, so 20% fire chance isn't going to be as good as you quite think. 3200 HE damage is not amazing, though, for guns uh, of this caliber. Certainly the... French battle cruisers have similar gun caliber, a little bit bigger, but over a thousand or nearly a thousand alpha damage more. <laughs> so it's definitely an AP boat. And I don't think that's terribly surprising given how we've seen these German ships, these German battle cruisers typically be more AP focused. Graf Spee certainly is at tier six. If you're interested in Graf Spee at tier six and you like that playstyle, you might enjoy Shill. Although I do think the matchmaker differences here might make it feel a little bit less tanky uh, especially because this ship doesn't have as much going for it in that regard you know tier six getting a heal is pretty insane the hp pool on graph speed as well it's pretty fun to play that battle cruiser role at tier six where 
tier 8 getting up into tier 10 games you might you might find yourself having to play a little farther back more like a standard cruiser rather than closer to a small battleship we get very fortunate here to not just die outright to the amagi and the matchmaker here pretty fortunate as well i should probably mention that <laughs> no tier 10s in sight here Twelve thousand damage into the broadside amagi pretty nice getting to use our last reload booster Another 10k damage. You can't underestimate these guns. Confederate high cal. Not, not too bad, actually. I was not expecting to get a game like this out of the shill, but uh, I will gladly take it. Unfortunately, not going to win this one, but not a bad result. Uh, 151, three kills here, and a decent showing for this AP. Even at longer ranges, even into battleships, it can do some work. But again, it's just a little bit too expensive, and Black Friday is coming up. And the playstyle does not translate particularly well into those higher tier games. Although, decent credits since you are a premium ship, so if you're interested in that, maybe it's a decent one to go for. And pretty much all our damage here coming from AP in this game, I think is an ideal look at this ship. The games where you're forced to play further back, you don't get the broadsides or the cruisers to shoot at. You're forced to shoot more HE. I think it's going to perform quite a bit worse. I think this is a somewhat of a best case example maybe not quite i mean certainly more lower tier or same tier cruisers that just go broadside to us would be nice um but that was that was a pretty solid match in this ship i think the armor here 30 millimeters on that deck armor 27 upper bow upper uh belt as well so you can be overmatched by some of the ships at your tier here certainly 30 millimeter icebreaker that's pretty big is quite nice uh, and then the 120 millimeter side, but you do have some spaced armor here alongside a poorly angled turtle back. So I won't, I wouldn't say this is uh, actually functioning like a turtle back where it's going to bounce shells up and away from your citadel. Think of it more like uh, French spaced armor is what I would say. So 30 and then uh, 60. So you will take some damage. Certainly we took citadels to that uh, Nagato. I'm surprised I didn't take Citadels to that Amagi, to be honest with you. Uh, probably should have, given how broadside I was to him, but we got pretty lucky. HP pool-wise, it's okay at tier 8. Fortunately, we do have a heal to help make up for that. And uh, cruiser dispersion on large caliber guns. It's it's really nice. Makes the ship more enjoyable to play than the battle cruiser dispersion ones, in my opinion. But it's still... I don't know. The ship's a bit compromised. I don't want to recommend it. it. It's it's interesting. It's an interesting ship, but I don't necessarily want to recommend it because, again, Black Friday is coming up, and I would way rather see you guys spend your money on Black Friday ships if you're planning on spending money at all uh, on this game. 11.7 kilometers is decent, uh, enough to facilitate this mid-range cruiser hunting playstyle, but your speed's really, really not all that amazing. So you're not going to be flying around the map like uh, Brennus, like I brought up. Of course, that's a tier 10. But it's a little harder to reposition in this ship. So you need to be good at finding those or understanding where the enemy team might go and getting into those positions early and thinking about that ahead of time as you can't reposition all that quickly. Here's the upgrades I was taking. Um, steering gears because our rudder is so bad and the firing angles aren't great. So I want to be able to turn in or out after shooting my guns if I'm getting shot at by a battleship. If you don't, you're going to probably take Citadels. <laughs> I did take quite a few spotting aircraft upgrades because I wanted to at least have a fighting chance against tier 10s. Um, certainly not necessary in this game, but I did want to go for that. You could certainly go for priority target to have a little more situational awareness to help you out there. But here's the build that I was running. Trying to go mostly for conceal and then the AP, of course. Superintendent here giving us extra healing as well as another reload booster. Really, really nice to help out uh, this ship in that way. But that's about it on the shill for uh, this update. It's interesting, it's different, but it's expensive and Black Friday is coming up if I had to distill everything I've said down. So let me know what you think in the comments down below. Thank you very much for watching and have a great rest of your day.